Judicial Department Concepts Number 1. Judicial Power Judicial power includes the duty of the courts to 1. Settle actual controversies involving rights which are legally demandable and enforceable and 2. Determine whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on part of or any branch or instrumentality of the government. The second clause effectively limits the doctrine of political question from the case Francisco v. House of Representatives, 2003. Judicial power is vested in 1. The Supreme Court and 2. By such lower courts as may be established by law. Judicial Review Where is judicial power vested and where is judicial review vested? Judicial power vested in the lower courts and the Supreme Court. Judicial review vested in the Supreme Court and lower courts. Judicial power. Definition. Duty to settle actual controversies involving rights which are legally demandable and enforceable and to determine whether or not there has been grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on part of any branch of the instrumentality of the government. Section 1, Subsection 2, Article 8 of the Constitution. Judicial Review is the power of the courts to test the validity of executive and legislative acts in light of their conformity with the Constitution. From the case Angara v. Electoral Commission, 1936. Requisites for the exercise of judicial power. Jurisdiction. Power to decide and hear a case and execute a decision thereof. Requisites for the exercise of judicial review. Acting on cases within the court's subject matter jurisdiction. 1. There must be an actual case or controversy. 2. The person challenging the act must have local standing. 3. The question of constitutionality must be raised at the earliest opportunity. And 4. The issue of constitutionality must be the very least mota of the case. What is judicial supremacy? When the judiciary mediates to allocate constitutional boundaries, it does not assert any superiority over other departments. It does not in reality nullify or invalidate any act of the legislature, but only asserts the solemn and sacred obligation assigned to it by the Constitution to determine it conflicting claims of authority under the constitution and to establish for the parties in an actual controversy the rights which that instrument secures and guarantees to them from the case angara versus electoral commission 1936 requisites of judicial review one Actual case or controversy. This means that there must be a genuine conflict of legal interest, legal rights, and legal and interest which can be resolved through judicial determination. From the case John Hay v. Lim, 2003. This precludes the courts from entertaining the following 1. Request for an advisory opinion. From the case Gingona v. CA, 1998. 2. Cases that are or have become moot and academic, example, cease to present a, or that is, cease to present a justiciable controversy due to supervening events. From the case David v. Makabagal Arroyo, 2006. Second requisite of judicial review, locus standi. Locus standing or legal standing refers to the party's personal or substantial interest in the case arising from the direct injury which it has sustained or will sustain as a result of the challenged governmental action. Legal standing calls for more than a just generalized grievance. The term interest means a material interest, an interest in an action, in an issue affected by the government action, as distinguished from mere interest in the question involved or a mere incidental interest. The general requirement is also referred to as the direct and substantial injury test. From the case CREBA versus Energy Regulatory Commission 2010. 
may be set aside by the court as a mere procedural technicality in view of the paramount public interest or transcendental importance of the issue involved from the case Kilos Bayan v. Gigona, 1994, Tatad v. Department of Energy, 1995, and Mamba v. Slada, 19, 2009. What are the forms of locus standi? Taxpayers, voters, concerned citizens, and legislators may be accorded locus standi or standing to sue, provided that the following requirements are met. 1. If the cases involve constitutional issues. 2. For taxpayers, there must be a claim of illegal disbursement of public funds or that the tax measure is unconstitutional. 3. For voters, there must be a showing of obvious interest in the validity of the election law in question. <clears throat> 4. For concerned citizens, there must be a showing that the issues raised are of transcendental importance which must be settled early. And 5. For the legislatures, there must be a claim that the official action complained of infringes upon their prerogatives as legislators. <coughs> <coughs> Ordinary citizens are also recognized to have local standing in the following circumstances. <coughs> 1. When a public right is involved, such as the right to information. And 2. As expressly provi provided in Article 7, Section 18 of the 1987 Constitution, granting, recognizing the suit filed by any citizen challenging the sufficiency of the factual basis of the pro proclamation of martial law or the suspension <coughs> of the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus or the extension thereof. What are the special rules on standing? for taxpayers, citizens, voters, legis and legislators, and um, third-party standing <clears throat> for taxpayers. Appropriation and disbursement for citizens. Transcendental importance, one, two, public right, or three, under Section 18, Article 7, on the sufficiency of the factual basis for a martial law or suspension of the writ of, <clears throat> of the Privilege of the writ of habeas corpus. Voter. Right or right of suffrage is involved. Legislature. Legislator. Authorized one and two affects legislative prerogatives. That is a derivative suit. Third party standing. Number one, litigants must have an injury in fact. Two, litigants must have close relation to the third party. And three, there is an existing hindrance to the third party's ability to protect its own interest. From the case White Light Corporation versus City of Manila 2009. Enforcement of environmental laws. Number one, any Filipino citizen. Two, in representation of others, including minors or generations yet unborn, from the case Resident Marine Mammals of the Protected Seascape, Seascape Ta Tannen Strait v. Reyes 2015. Note, despite its lack of interest, an association has the legal personality to file a suit and represent its members if the outcome of the case will affect their vital interest. Similarly, an organization has the standing to assert the concern of its constituents. From the case Bayan Muna v. Mendoza, 2017. Third requisite of judicial review. Constitutional question must be raised at the earliest possible opportunity. Exception. 1. In criminal cases, at the discretion of the court. 2. In civil cases, if it's necessary for the determination of the case itself, and three, when the jurisdiction of the court is involved. Note, the reckoning point is the first competent court. The question must be raised 
at the first court with the judicial review powers. Hence, the failure to raise the constitutional question before the NLRC is not fatal to the case. Ah, uh, kaya dilim siya court. Okay. From the case Serrano v. Gallant Marine Services, 2009. Fourth requisite of judicial review, Las Mota. The decision of the constitutional question must be determinative of the case itself. Its constitutionality must be the cause of the suit or action. The constitutionality or an act of the legislature will not be determined by the courts unless that question is properly raised and is necessary to the determination of the case. That is, the issue of constitutionality must be the very least mota presented. What does operative fact doctrine mean? The doctrine is applicable when a declaration of unconstitutionality will impose an undue burden on those who have relied on the invalidity or invalidity of the law, but it cannot it can never be invoked to validate as constitutional an unconstitutional act. From the case municipality of Malabang versus Benito nineteen sixty nine. The general rule is, the interpretation or declaration of unconstitutionality is retroactive in that it applies from the law's effectivity, except when operative fact doctrine. Subsequent declaration of unconstitutionality does not nullify all acts exercised in line with the law. From the case Municipality of Malabang v. Benito, 1969. Note, only projects, activities, and programs that can no longer be undone and those beneficiaries relied in good faith on the unconstitutional activities validity are the objects of the operative fact doctrine. The doctrine cannot be applied to the co-authors or co-actors of an unconstitutional act. From the case Araulio v. Aquino III, 2014. Moot questions. What is a moot question? A case becomes moot and academic when there is no more actual controversy between the parties or no useful purpose can be served in passing upon the merits of the case. From the case Kino v. Comelec, 2012. When a case is moot, it becomes unjusticiable. From the case Permenta v. Estrada, 2010. Ripeness of the controversy. The suit must be raised not not too early that it is conjectural or anticipatory, nor too late that it becomes moot. General rule is, courts will not decide questions that have become moot and academic, except 1. When there is grave violation of the constitution, 2. The situation is of exceptional character and paramount public interest is involved. 3. The constitutional issue raises, raised requires formulation of controlling principles to guide the bench, the bar, and the public. And 4. The case is applicable of repetition yet evading review. From the case, David v. Makapagal Arroyo, 2006. The concept of political question doctrine. The term political question reflects refers to one matters to be exercised by the people in their primary political capacity, two those specifically delegated to some other department or particular office of the government with discretionary power to act. It is concerned with issues dependent upon the wisdom and not the legality <coughs> of a particular measure. From the case Tanyada v. Cuenco, 1957. In recent years, the court has set aside the doctrine and assumed jurisdiction whenever it found constitutionally imposed limits on the exercise of powers conferred upon the legislative and executive branches. From Bernas. Note. In Haviliana v. Executive Secretary, 1973. The court ruled that the issue of validity of the proclamation is a justiciable question, considering that Article 15 of the 1935 Constitution prescribes the methods or procedures for its amendment. The question of whether or not 
the revised constitution has been validly ratified in accordance with Article 15, is not only subject to judicial review, but it is the duty of the court to decide such question. However, on deciding whether or not the proposed constitution was in force, the court did not give a ruling on this matter, granted that it was a political question. In 2016, the Supreme Court ruled the President Duterte's decision to have the remains of Marcos interred at the Libingan ng mga bayani involves a political question that is not a justiciable controversy. The President decided a question of policy based on his wisdom that it shall promote national healing and forgiveness. There being no taint of grave abuse in the exercise of such discretion, his decision on that political question is outside the ambit of political review from the case Ocampo versus Enriquez 2016.